Hey guys, this is Christo and today let's talk about integrating grains into um, bullet sims. So sometimes there are these cases where you have um, a bullet sim, you know, rigid bullet simulation that you really need uh, to use bullet for. Um, so there might be some constraints that you need or some in rigid body interaction but then you don't really want to have the rigid bodies um, the only thing that you would render you want to have an extra layer um, sometimes uh, there is a situation where there is ground for example and you always want to have some dirt some kind of a more um, you know fluid granular more interesting um, like a higher detail a higher frequency detail um, thing happening there and you don't really get this kind of stuff easily with just the rigid bodies. And you could um, do something that uh, we are going to be talking about in here, which is a um, com combination of, of um, some of the ideas that I've been showing on the Flip uh, Whitewater video, where there was um, whitewater both inside and outside of the fluid and some of the ideas from the um, some of the other great videos that show how to um, kind of upscale uh, grain simulation and um, what we're going to be making is something which is um, grain sim that is getting informed by the rigid body sim and augments it in a way that you can either um, add or replace it completely so um, the overall concept is that let me just stop any pop-ups. So uh, the over overall concept is that we will um, take the rigid body simulation and create some fields from it. Um, so um, have uh, points in its entire volume and uh, get the um, get some data from them and then move these points along that uh, rigid body simulation but in a smart way um, so that smart way would be that in uh, that they will be following the simulation when they're inside and when they're outside they will be using the granular solver to get the grain behaviors which is quite simple so to set this up um, I will import the um, uh, rigid bodies and um, delete the stuff that I don't need. The collision object, for example, here I just decided to ignore in here. Uh, you could additionally add it as a collision object, which is um, a little bit interesting. And then um, the source itself is the ice offset and points from volume that you would expect, so the usual points on a volume. Uh, then to be able to say which particles are inside and outside because I would be using grain on the outside and just uh, following the uh, simulation on the inside I will, I'm gonna uh, make an SDF and because I will also need to make them follow I will make also uh, volume um, so yeah with the different polygons you can add another attribute here so you can also make a velocity volume and um, I'm deleting it uh, on this uh, null just so I can pick it up and I only have a single node so you could also keep it there and use you know the, the indices of the volumes so I have an SDF and I have the velocity field here and I have the source so going into the dop sim uh, what happens is that there's the ground, just so stuff doesn't fall off or anything. Uh, there is a guide to let me see how this behaves versus the um, rigid body simulation. And then, then the source is um, picking up all the points only in the start. And um, to be able to say which points are inside and which are outside, I am and just have it playing as I speak. So there's something a bit easy, more interesting to be looking at. That's quite low resolution, so it simulates quite fast. So to be able to say which ones are inside and which ones are outside, I'm getting the SDF and using a 
um, attribute from volume uh, remapped uh, to this range so I can um, yeah, pick up the points uh, inside and outside and I make a group you can also do it with a stream it actually would be a little bit uh, better I guess uh, so the group is just uh, uh, saying okay um, these particles are going to be inside and outside based on where they are in that surface and uh, zero here means that um, a lot of particles are going to be outside and one means that few, part few particles are going to be outside uh, so if I lift this up and simulate you see that the blue particles are going to be less um, what I have in the colors is that I use that uh, distance, that surface uh, node, basically signifying how close it is to a surface to have the um, uh, green particles are close and the red are far away and then the, the blue ones are the ones that are in that um, outside of that, that group so the ones that I'm going to be doing games with and you can see that if I raise this uh, surface offset uh, quite a lot there is much fewer green, uh, blue particles so most of the uh, points will be follow will be uh, doing the following rather than the uh, grains. So these two behaviors, uh, here is the following behavior. So um, on the groups which are inside, on the group which is inside, I do um, a by volume, picking up the velocity volume and using the update position and giving it the velocity at the end because we need that velocity for. Uh, you know when we render and when we when they split up because one frame they are inside you know the other frame they are outside uh, then the gravity is, is being applied to the particles which are not in the uh, surface group along with the drag and then grains are also applied only to the particles which are not in the inside the surface um, sprite usual stuff and the colors as I said you know one ramp which is <clears throat> uh, setting them to be um, to be uh, red to uh, green to red based on how how inside they are and one override which is uh, which is telling them to become blue when they are uh, when they are in that uh, kind of out of that surface group and we. The, the grains, there is not too much going on here. Um, I have scaled back the internal collisions um, so, it, <clears throat> so they don't uh, maybe pile up as much. Of course, this is you know just stuff that you can that you, that you tweak. Uh, clumping is nice, but you know, uh, trying not to be too heavy handed on that uh, because it becomes quite obvious. And the um, solver, because you know, this is a grain because of the granular solver. Uh, and to not have your know, particles escape the velocity that uh, uh, surface area uh, too easily, uh, use uh, a few more sub steps with a, a, a little bit lower CFL condition. So, you know, I get some sub steps when the grain solver uh, needs them. So, yeah, that's basically it. Um, quite useful for, you know, this kind of earthy sims. Thank you.